All right, we're back here on the Chase Almost Podcast, taping this on a Monday afternoon. First timer, Coach Sean Calhoun of the Colquitt County Packers is here. Sean, good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. Uh, I know that I know me and you have been trying to hook up for a long time, so definitely glad we did, and thank you for having me on. Absolutely, man. Hey, uh, it, it all worked out. We're all busy guys. It's hard to put everything together, and you're you're walking into a, a big situation here at Colquitt. Uh, I watched a lot of y'all's tape last year. The one thing I want to start off with is just that the the numbers and the uniforms that y'all were rocking versus Valdosta better be out the door because I'm trying to take notes and look at who's who and trying to figure out what number everybody is. And it was driving me nuts. Like, I don't know, even on the broadcast, which I highly encourage folks to listen to because Colquitt's got a great radio broadcast. Yes. We're just like completely perplexed at what was going on with some of these uh this number situation. So can you at least promise me those numbers, the the color scheme of that uniform in particular is out the door this fall? Yeah. So they're there. We have a white set and then a home black set that we're probably not going to wear. And, and it's funny that you mentioned that. So the Georgia high school association has actually banned it. So I think within a year <laughs> or two, everybody yeah. has to, because that's why you just, you couldn't, you couldn't tell on film who's mm. who, and then in the stands, you couldn't tell. Seeing some teams will even go the silver numbers on the white jersey, and like you just, you, I mean, you just, you can't see it. So, mm. um, yeah. So uh, starting again, I think it's in a year or two. Every everybody has to have the main part of the number basically, you know, dark on the dark on the jersey. There you go. I like it. That game was bonkers, by the way. Have you gone back and watched every Colco game from this past year? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's kind of the. You know, m- m- my first step in taking the job, you know, kind of how I get to know the kids, mm-hmm. you know, and kind of, you know, what they can do on and off the field and who's coming back and 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 uh, this and that. So un- unbelievable game, unbelievable finish, you know, atmosphere over there is always incredible and atmosphere for that game in general, because it's the I think it's the South's oldest rivalry. Hmm. Uh, and uh, so it's a it's a it's a heck of a game for sure. The one game that popped the most for you where you were like, that was, I, I wish I could have been on the sidelines for that particular game. Was there one, for, one like that for you? Probably that one. Okay. You know, I mean, you know, it was, it was, it was hold on. A- I don't know if you want to be on that. Cause there was moments in that game coach where I think you might've thrown the headset. You watched Justin Rogers, like move up and down the field where he's losing his mind because there were, there was one instance that I'm sure you remember where he's a, uh, the the play like they went back and forth at least four times on trying to figure out where the spot was and what the penalty was and it somehow ended up I, I for, I'd have to go back through the notes but it was like somehow ended up being like a five yard and it was like a thirty yard loss at one point for penalties and they had no idea what the original call was and I just I could not imagine being a coach in that predicament where you're you know you're not getting a good explanation as to what just happened there no you know there you know there's sometimes you know you're just you're just at the Murphy that at the mercy of the referees, I remember one time I'm at, I'm at Carrollton and we're, mm. and we're playing Rome and we go forward on third down. Well, the refs say that it was fourth down. And, <laughs> and, and so we're like, um, no, cause it's right at midfield. Yeah. I mean, I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy that, mm. you, know, you know, in the game anyway, I ended up losing a down. So that yeah. was, yeah. So I, I've been on the end and we all have, but you know what? We've also been on the end of calls that have gone our way that probably shouldn't have. So, um, yeah. How did uh, just being a player and a coach at Valdosta kind of prepare you for big time high school football in South Georgia? I knew at a young age that, you know, that that my football playing time was going to stop after college. Um, Hmm. You know, I just you know, I I knew I I knew that a long time ago and I I knew that I probably wasn't going to play a lot in college. I was going to be the walk on and I just I, I knew I wanted to get in coaching from a from a long time. So I, mm-hmm. I actually helped coach my brother's team. He's seven years younger than me. When I was in high school, I would go and help their rec team coach. So I've kind of always, always wanted to, and, you know, from the player side of it, you know, just kind of learning from the coaches we had about Austin state, which was some really good ones. You know, obviously Chris Hatcher was our head coach. Who's at Sanford. Who's been at Georgia Southern and, you know, Will Muschamp, who's been a head coach, Kirby Smart, was on the staff too. And, you know, there's about seven or eight others that went on, you know, to, uh, to a uh, division one coach. And so I was able to learn a lot, but you don't know how much time it takes until you are kind of in that coaching realm. So when I started GA in there and, and up in South Dakota and, you know, and you kind of get a, 
you know, a feel for it, you're either going to love it, you know, and, you know, embrace the grind or you're going to say, Hey, you know, this is kind of not for me, but it was, it was for me, you know, for sure. And I had some great mentors that were able to, you know, really prep me for kind of whenever my time was, was coming down the road. What drew you to Colquitt originally from Vestavia Hills? So, I mean, you know, there's, there's a handful of schools, in my opinion, in the state of Georgia, football wise, when you hear them, you, you kind of perk up, you mm-hmm. know, and Colquitt is one of those, you know, obviously being there before, you know, you know, being there as the offensive coordinator before and then leaving, you know, and you never, you never know where, where, you know, where the good Lord is going to take you. And, and uh, because we were really happy where we were at, mm-hmm. Vestavia and Birmingham is a great city and Vestavia, awesome people. Um, we were not looking, you know, but it was one of those, again, you know, they kind of call you, you definitely need to have a conversation, you know, mm-hmm. and we did and just kind of, you know, kind of led to one thing. And obviously, you know, me, me and my wife, you know, we, we pray about a lot of things, but definitely pray about some big decisions. And, um, you know, and it was something that we thought for us and our family at this, at, at this time was a good decision. Do you look at it as, this is a long-term rebuild or do you think this is a retooling with you? You're like, we're ready to hit the ground running and we should be right back into a uh, big time, deep, deep playoff run come November. I definitely think deep playoff run for sure. You know, cause I mean, you know, the, obviously the past two coaches, I mean, you know, coach Probst and coach Rogers, you know, I'm, I mean, winning hadn't been an issue. Mm-hmm. You know? And so, you know, we're hoping to just kind of keep that, you know, kind of, kind of keep that ball rolling, you know, I mean, there was about, you know, a long time there where we were either in the state championship game or the semifinals. And obviously, you know, we want to go back. I mean, everything that we do is to play in the game 15. And, you know, so that's what, that's what we're planning for. But, you know, I, the, the best word that I can describe this team, and I've talked to our players about it because it's a very dangerous word, the word potential, mm. you, know, and, you know, and we have a lot of it, you know, and, and at times we we look really good, and I think that we can make a deep run. At times, I'm like, ooh, you know, we're not, you know, we're struggling, struggling a little bit, and that's why, you know, every day's every day's important at practice. Well, y'all have got it. Just, I mean, I tell folks I'm up here in East Tennessee, and I cover that, and see a lot of folks over here. I mean, it's different. Like, it's I'm sure you felt that a little bit in Alabama, uh, probably not to the extent, but re, uh, classification seven A in the state of Georgia is just a different, different talent pool, different group of guys, different expectations. It's just, it's just different. You have to go see it in real time. You got to go to a uh, Farragut football game and then go watch Colquitt versus Lowndes. And then you're like, this is not even the same sport <laughs> in, in a lot of ways, but are, is that like exciting for you to kind of make that jump and really back into this region where it's brutal? Like this is a really, really tough region year in, year out. Yes, sir. You know, it, the best way to describe the highest classification in Alabama and Georgia, like the top tier teams in Alabama, they can compete in Georgia for sure. Mm-hmm. But there's there's a lot more top tier teams in Georgia. You know, um, you know, a lot more a, a lot more players. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, bigger population in the state. But yeah, um, you know, but being able to come back, you know, you know, Region One Seven A. I mean, there's nothing like it. And uh, you know, just the fan bases you know, how much love each community has for their football program, you know, what Friday nights mean to everybody, you know, mean to the school year, you know, you know, every, you know, every Friday night and the, and the community, it's, it's so, it, you know, it's so exciting. And uh, one thing that's interesting is when I was here the first time I was in the box, so I've mm-hmm. never coached on the sideline. So, huh. uh, so this year we'll, we'll uh, the first home game is, um, is game is game two for us. And so I'll, uh, I'll be my first time on the sideline. So it's going to be great. You know, um, the atmospheres for all of our games, but especially those region games. I mean, it's, it's hard to describe for sure. What, uh, when you came in this summer and you, you had the spring and everything else, are you feeling good about where you're at with your installs, with where, what you're going to be able to run this fall? Do you think you're going to be able to put, uh, your imprint on both sides of the ball pretty strong right out of the gate? Yes, sir. You know, with us implementing a new offensive system, defensive system, even special team system, you know, special teams, we, you know, we started implementing in the summer, but offense mm-hmm. and defense, I mean, it was immediately, you know, immediately with, you know, on the board showing old film of where we've been, you know, where our, you know, where our defense coordinator's been and just, you know, getting them to learn. So when we mm-hmm. hit the field in spring, it was kind of, 
hit the ground running and and then it kind of falls on your players you know what they can retain you know what they can do uh just kind of dictates how much we can put on them and you know and these kids love ball and they're football players and they're and they're they're pretty football savvy so you know stuff that we've been able to install put on them um i i definitely like where we are when you started going through different guys' tapes, like for instance, Jack Lettrell, uh, former or future Tennessee volunteer over here, very excited about that. What it, what popped for you about his game? Uh, I mean, just his athleticism. His athleticism. Mm-hmm. You can see his competitiveness on his film. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he was a very versatile. You know, very versatile player up at up at up at Hebron, and you know, mm-hmm. going both ways, and you know, kick returning and punt returning, and you know, just. Um, you know, a kid like that, I mean, you, you got to play him, you know, and mm-hmm. you really got to maximize his skills. And, you know, and then once I was able, you know, to get to meet him, you know, when you see him off the field, you know, his off the field matches the film, you know, and mm-hmm. that's always, that's always a, that's always a great thing because he's a heck of a football player. And then when you get to know him, he's a heck of a person too. So, and a really good student, but he's, you know, um, he's definitely going to help us uh, for sure, you know, starting safety you know, you may see him on offense a little bit, but definitely hmm. special team game. And again, you know, we don't get a lot of kids like that. You know, mm-hmm. we don't get a lot of move ins, you know, down, you know, down south kind of kind of where we are. So when we do, um, we definitely got to maximize that talent. You look at Charlie Pace uh, and what he was able to do. I mean, he's he's just so fast and so good at reading blocks. Like that was something I would just like he's he's built for the outside zone and he's really patient, really patient runner. What are you most excited about uh, using uh, like just utilizing him in your new your new style going into next year? You don't always have a running back that has the home run ability, yeah. you know, and he and 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 he truly has that. I mean, any anytime he touches the ball. His feet are elite. I mean, he's mm-hmm. got some of the best footwork that I've ever seen. Um, you know, just a tough kid, you know, you know, versatile, can do a lot, you know, in the run game, pass game. But when you hand him the ball, I mean, he literally has the chance to go to distance every single time. And I think, you know, I kind of put myself in a defense coordinator's shoes. I mean, you got I mean, you gotta box him in. Mm-hmm. You know, because if he hits that edge or if it's over, if you don't fit it right, yes, sir, he's gone. And so um, you know, th- Definitely glad that he's a Packer for sure. What about Nico? When you look at him and his tape uh, from last year, what are you most excited about uh, just seeing where his game can go uh, this year? Well, one, like if you, like if you meet him, you mm-hmm. know, he's not, he's not going to, he's not going to impress you while you with his size, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you know, I mean, he's a shorter kid, you know, um, you know, I mean, he's, he's, you know, he's slim, but he can move. And I tell you what, now he can throw a football. Mm -hmm. His arm strength is better in person. And since I've been around him, than I, than I thought it was on film. I mean, he Mm -hmm. can, he can spin it now. So I think the sky's the limit, you know, obviously, you know, starting this region as a sophomore to start at this high school as as a sophomore, you're doing something right. And so he played really well last year. I think he accounted for, I think like 27 touchdowns and, you know, I mean, I hope it's 30 plus, 40 plus, And um, he's really had a good spring, really had a really, really good summer. So I'm, I'm, so I'm hoping that just kind of transitions to the fall. Yeah, I mean, his reads were really strong last year. Um, he I mean, you guys had some mismatches on the line of scrimmage where it was just evident. And uh, there was one play in particular, the the big tight end. I'm forgetting his name. Um, super tall. Yes, where it was, there was one play where I had, I had to go back where it was immediate where it's like, oh, it's gonna be the linebacker on him. It's over. He's going on a go route. Like that's that's done. Like they don't yep. have anything. Like that's that's over. And he, you could see that he knew that this was this was done. And they had a big touchdown on that one. But oh, yeah, um, yeah, mismatch. I would say a little bit with Landon uh, mm-hmm. on, on that regard. Yes. But uh, is there one position group that you're most intrigued by seeing how the the position battle breaks out uh, the rest of this summer going into uh, week one? Um, I think it's kind of twofold. Um, I, I think it's our linebacking core, you know, with us running a three, four mm. feel, you know, feel, feel, uh, that there's a big battle in our outside linebackers and our inside linebackers. And, mm. you know, I, I, I think the two that are going to win the job at, you know, at, 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 at both of those spots, you know, that they're, they're definitely going to earn it, you know, cause mm. there's, there's some serious competition there. And then the second one's our offensive line. You know, we, we feel like we got seven. 
uh, obviously we got to, we got to get down five. And so we've been doing a good job of kind of mixing them in and out, you know, and uh, seeing who can play what, what position. So uh, those two for sure. And, you know, and, and we'll see how August 5th goes, which is our scrimmage at Peach County. And, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're always evaluating every day. What do you think, it, like you're walking around downtown Colquitt and someone stops you and they're like, hey, coach, uh, it's week four. And we're like, hey, what, uh, what, what's going on here? What do you think they're going to be most surprised about uh, the way Colquitt County football looks this year versus what they've uh, been accustomed to the last couple of years? We just want to make them proud. Mm. You know, I mean, we, they're going to know that when we step on the field, we're going to play Packer football and, 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 and number one above all else Mm. Is, we're gonna, is we're gonna be physical. I mean, that's what that's what we've hung our hat on, and we're gonna be physical. And we used to just wear you down and just beat you in the fourth quarter. I mean, I mean, that's I mean, that's really the years that we've been really, really, really good. Because there's a couple of teams. I'm not gonna lie. If you just go player by player, they were mm. they were head and shoulders better better than we were. We were just we we're just tougher. Mm. You know tougher and in better condition and we and we take so much pride in our weight room and our strength and conditioning program and you know so hopefully hopefully you know um our community can be proud of that now um does that is that going to translate into wins i sure hope so Mm -hmm. and you know it's you know it's amazing you know kind of kind of what that w will do for you but we just want to make them proud you know and we're going to play as as hard as we can for four quarters and then if it takes overtime periods you know yeah, that's definitely what they're going to get from the coaching staff. And then that's definitely what, what they're going to get from the players. Is there a game you already had circle that you're most excited about, uh, about leading the Packers out of the tunnel for this fall? Really game one. Hmm. You no, know, cause, and it, cause you know, it's going to be my first, you know, my first game here as the head coach and, mm-hmm. and that's, that's exciting. And, you know, we had a, you know, had a spring scrimmage at Cairo. We'll have a fall scrimmage at peach, but, you know, but actually, you know, game one, um, I know it's not at home, but still, I mean, it's game one versus Deerfield Beach out of Florida, you know, and it's just, it, it you know, it's going to be, you know, kind of starting my time here, you know, which I hope my time's long. And that's what, you know, that's what me and my wife and our three kids, you know, uh, hope for. And um, so, you know, definitely going to be excited about that. And it's right around the corner. How did that work with the two Florida non-region games uh, this year? Is that something y'all really prioritized just because of the market and where you're at? Or was that just something happenstance that you got two Florida non-region games? Well, one, I kind of inherited the schedule. And, mm-hmm. and then two, so so the very first game, us against Deerfield Beach, they're, they're doing like a little South Georgia classic. So mm-hmm. we're playing our game at five. Lowndes is playing, don't quote me, I think it's American Heritage. Okay, but because it's over at Lounge, so it's a doubleheader, South Georgia versus Florida. Hmm. And then next year we're going to host it at our place, and obviously we'll be the nightcap game, and and Lounge and whoever will will, will be the first. And so that was kind of our way of doing, you know, kind of a classic instead of going up to Atlanta to the Corky Kell, mm. you know, kind of keeping our fan base, you know, kind of down there, and they and they you know, yeah. they don't travel as far, and then really. Lincoln, you know, there's there's sometimes, I mean, you're a top tier team in your state. I mean, it really is tough to uh, get games, you know, mm-hmm. and it really is. And so, you know, obviously Tallahassee's an hour and 15 minutes away. And, you know, Lincoln is a is a really good program. So mm-hmm. anytime you can play a really good program out of state, you know, um, for that, you know, for that kind of exposure, it's always good. So it's so kind of a I guess to answer your question, kind of a mixture of everything between regional and some I inherited. Did you have a relationship with Coach DeBose at all? No, sir. Um, you know, I think I might have met him, you know, one time, you know, just kind of in passing. Well, y'all like ships in the night. He goes back to Alabama. You come <laughs> into Georgia right when he's late, like the lounge. And it's for different circumstance, circumstances, obviously, for Coach DeBose um, yes. going back home to Alabama. But it was interesting when I saw that. I was like, oh, they're, they're just they're passing by. So I was curious if y'all actually uh, knew each other and had a relationship at all. Um, no, sir. There you go. Um, well, what about the what? What would you say is most different uh, about Colquitt coming back after being a couple of years away? Maybe just for you as a person, like how are you different as a coach uh, this time around at Colquitt versus what kind of how you were before? Is there anything you've noticed that's different that Vestavia kind of taught you to and you evolved a little bit? Um, 
you know, I think I think any any place that you go and be a head coach, um, just you got to figure out the pulse of that community. Mm. And you know, me being here previously helped, but I was also in the assistant coach chair. Mm-hmm. You get in the head coach chair, it's you know, it's totally different. And so um, I don't know how I'd be doing it if I hadn't had these previous relationships. So it's been good, you know, seeing old friends and familiar faces, but it's also been great too. You know, now as a head coach, I need to know and meet and greet as many people as possible. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so, you know, definitely learned a lot of that, you know, at Vestavia Hills too. And, you know, cause every place you go again, is just, you know, it's different. Every, pl- every place has pros and cons and, you know, and you just, you want them to know that you care about the community. It's not just, you know, it's not just football and, you know, and you care about, you know, the community and all the students and, you know, and then, and then definitely how your football players are in the uh, community. So definitely the biggest thing is just, you know, just being in the head coach chair and, and, you know, instead of the assistant coach chair. That's interesting. Um, who was your like? Who who's your biggest mentor to get you ready for this? Who who would you signal as your biggest coaching mentor? So, uh, coaching wise, um, it's kind of a mixture of two. My offensive coordinator in high school, um, Scott Woodall, and hmm. and and we still talk to this day. And then my college and, and, and then my college head coach and uh, position coach Chris Hatcher. Hmm. Um, you know, just, just learn so much, um, you know, whether it's organization, you know, um, you know, skills and, you know, and ways to lead. And then also to, um, you know, probably a three headed monster there with, uh, David Dean, who was our offense coordinator at Valdosta state. And then I worked for him when I was a coach at, at Valdosta state. So, you know, I think anybody that you work with and for, I think you take things, you know, a way that fits you and fits your philosophy and, you know, and, you know, and things that don't. So, you know, those three have definitely impacted me a lot. You know, I mean, I probably think about all three of them, you know, uh, daily, weekly, you know, stuff that they've, that they've taught me, you know, and then, um, they're just on the job training, you know, it's kind of like having a kid, you know, it's just, there's just some things you just got to learn on your own. You know, sometimes you don't want to learn it the hard way, but sometimes you got to. Do you have any game day routines? Like how do you, how do you approach Friday? Uh, for for game days in the fall, um, you know I I don't have necessarily um, I think every, everybody you know gets gets you know gets a Friday organized whether it's a morning walkthrough you know your pregame meals normally at the same time and you know and this and that um, my probably biggest routine is that is that my wife uh, shaves the back of my neck every Thursday. <laughs> um okay but she waits for friday like that's a game day thing that's a game day treat for her to be able to shave the husband's neck there you go so you know and that's probably me just being lazy and just not going yeah to over so you know so um I well you're a bald man you got the the strong uh beard going in south georgia heat in mid-july so shout out to you man i, this, I don't know how you're doing it this just being lazy and, yeah. and, and so i'll shave it either tonight or tomorrow but in season i always shave Thursday night, my wife shaves my neck on Thursday night. And then Friday, I mean, it's really just, you know, um, just kind of just, you know, just kind of our normal, our normal routine. And so it's, uh, I always carry a little bag with me. Uh, my coaches have given me stuff about it. So it was a bag that like my parents gave me when I was like seven years old. It had like some old workout, I think like some old LA gear workout stuff in it. It's this little okay. bag with red handles and, but I love it. Very sentimental to me and, and any coach that I've ever worked with. They, and if they see this, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so they kind of give me a hard time about that. I like it. I like it. No pregame food though. There's no go-to for you. So I, I will eat, you know, whatever we feed the kids, you know, okay. um, and you know, whether it's a, you know, a, a buffet style, you know, with, you know, with your chicken, mashed potatoes, green beans, or just some, you know, just some sandwiches and fruit and stuff. Yes. I, I kind of just eat what they eat. I like it. I like it. Um, what's the, what's your go-to spot in Colquitt? Like, have you, do you already have like your, your favorite local spots? Oh, uh, yes. So, you know, there, there's a hibachi place in town, mm. uh, Kumo. There's a, uh, um, the 50 yard line. He's got some unbelievable wings. Are um, you a bone in or a boneless guy? All right. All right. So there, so there's a, there's a big Zaxby's here. So Ray uh, Goff, who obviously yeah. is a 
legendary. Well, he went here, so him and his siblings own a bunch of Zaxby's. So we so we have mm. one here in town. So if I go there, I get boneless. But mm. but anywhere else out, bone in for for sure. And there's a place, you know, there's a bunch of places on the square mm. um, to eat. You know, uh, hometown, three crazy bakers, uh, blue sky, and then, uh, but. But the good Lord's blessed me. I've married a really good cook. So, okay. So my wife really, she is. What's her best dish? Oh, goodness. You know, whether it's, you know, broccoli chicken Alfredo, she makes some homemade pizzas that are, that are unbelievable too. I mean. There's a pineapple out. belong on a pizza. Coach. Yeah, I mean, it's, she's a, she's a good cook. There you go. Sure. Does a pineapple belong on a pizza or no? All right. To me, I, fruit is completely separate and I mm-hmm. eat fruit raw. Any, any fruit that's cooked, I'm out. And, okay. And that's pies, everything. Like I'm like I'm a weirdo like that. It's it's raw fruit and it's cooked. Mm, no thanks. I'm I'm right there with you. Uh any sweet tooth? Like are you like a big gum guy? Like ice cream? Like what uh what's your guilty like your guilt your guilty pleasure food? <sighs> Sour patch kids. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, you know, I like a good Sour Patch kid, but, but but sometimes if you eat too many of them, they kind of hurt your mouth and yeah, hurt your teeth. Uh my wife I got TMJ, will, I can't do it, man. She will she she undercooks like chocolate chip cookies and so they're so soft. That's okay. Yeah, that's that's really good too. So there you go. Um, yeah. So I like it. I like it. Uh coach, this has been great. I appreciate you making the time. Uh how do the good folks uh listening in on in South Georgia or just around the Georgia, greater Atlanta area? How do they support the Colca County Packers going into next year? Yes, sir, Chase. Well, I, I greatly appreciate it, and and uh, just uh, thank you for your time, and go pack. Absolutely. We'll we'll circle back uh, once this season gets going and all that good stuff. So I'm very excited to see what happens here. Colquitt County is one of the best programs in the state of Georgia. Um, so I'm very excited to to see wh- how it all unfolds this year. I think you're you're going to be in good shape, and I think the the Packers are in good hands. So good luck to you this season, Coach, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank you. All right. <music>